You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Good evening and welcome to Join the Discussion, a monthly show about senior health and wellness. My name is Madeline Francesi. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Development for Heber Healthcare and thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to take a closer look tonight at assisted living and whether assisted living is right for you or a loved one. It's not unusual for families to delay looking at assisted living because either there's a negative connotation with it or relatives simply say they're not ready. However, recent surveys have found that once people move into assisted living, their quality of life improves, their social life improves, and their health and their welfare, not only for themselves, but the caregiver improves. Tonight, we're going to explore the many aspects of assisted living with the help of Valerie Bartos, who's the Director of Community Relations at Hoffman Summerwood Community, and Janice Gibson, who is the Director of Heber Healthcare's Assisted Living Service Agency. Thanks for joining us tonight, ladies. How are you? Thank you. Great. Great. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Good there, to be here. Good yeah. to have you. There are so many different questions about assisted living, and I'm going to start right with terms and definitions for the audience. Um, there's an independent living, um, there's something called continuing care communities, assisted living, independent memory care. Can you first give us a little bit of an understanding of housing for seniors and then a definition of what assisted living really is? Either one of you, you probably talk together. <laughs> Who would like to go first? We do. In the state of Connecticut, um, the assisted living portion is actually regulated. Um, and so the building that, so, that someone chooses to live in is, can be independent, can be assisted, can have assistance available to it. Um, the terminology, assisted living facility, um, is often used. And so, but, but, the, but the regulation part comes from the assisted living agency, that, the agency that provides the care. So that's why it gets kind of confusing. Because it that's, it's different from state to state as well. Okay, so the assisted living service agency that you're the director of, and we're gonna go into more detail about what exactly that means, you're actually setting the regulation for the assisted livings. Is Correct. that what I'm hearing? We're not setting it, but, the Department of Public but Health, in, but yes, but, but we, are, we are what's regulated. Okay, yeah. so how does someone know they need assisted living versus independent living? You wake up one day, you may have trouble maybe getting your groceries, you forgot maybe one of your pills, um, What's the trigger to say, I need to start to look? Right. Valerie? A lot of folks um, live in independent living. The difference between the independent and assisted is what Janice said, that we have the ability to provide the reminders for medication management, to have the staff to assist with bathing and dressing, um, all sorts of reminders and do a lot of personal care if needed. So um, when somebody is experiencing difficulties you know, with their activities of daily living, mm -hmm. it's a good time to start looking. And we always recommend having a look and exploring your options because every place is quite different. How early should people start exploring? So <laughs> I'm almost 60, should I start exploring? When you're healthy, young, and you know what you want? It's not when a bad idea to know what your options are, although you know, over a period of many, many years, your options may change. Mm -hmm. But it's a good idea to not wait until the last minute when you're in a crisis situation and need to How many are say, in crisis when you see them? Would you say, like a percentage-wise, most of the people are urgently needing something? We do see a fair amount of that. Would you agree, Janice? Yeah, there's usually been some event, some life event, 
that brings people to us. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean, as Valerie was saying, that people do start looking early on. We have folks that have been looking and coming and visiting us for two or three years before they actually wow. decide to move in. But that is unusual. That's the well-informed mm -hmm. mm -hmm. consumer. Because they're um, all different, right? I right. should never, we should never assume right. Assisted living, independent living, any of them, just because they're the same category, offer the same right. kinds of services right. and programs, Correct. or staffing even. Correct. So talk to me about the staff training and the regulation. I assume, you know, background checks. What can someone expect or should want in an assisted living as it relates to the staff qualifications? Well, I think it really, you know, one of the things we haven't talked about is a managed residential community, that terminology. Yeah. And a managed residential community is, it describes the building. Um, and then the, and, and in a managed residential community, you are regulated to have an assisted living agency, which is the part that the um, Department of Public Health comes into. Okay. So if you're not looking at a managed residential community, you're not looking at, at a, a building or a facility so that's mandated. So Hawkins Summerwood is a managed Correct. residential community Correct. that's also assisted living. Right. Correct. Okay. And if you are looking at a, at a facility that has an assisted living agency mm -hmm. providing services, that's going to be an MRC or a managed residential okay. community. Okay, so not so. all assisted livings have the assisted living service agency Correct. that you speak Correct. about that you have and that you offer. Um, Many communities have services coming from outside in the community okay, that which was is my next fine question. which is and you can do that also in, in our building you know mm -hmm. you can use our agency or you can use other outside um, entities um, and it really depends upon what that so when you're when you're shopping and when you're looking at, at assisted living facilities or just elder residences you want to know where that service is coming from is it coming all from outside or are there services being provided within the building okay so you find an assisted living, you love it. And the next question then you should probably be asking is that very next question. How am I getting my medical, my health services, mm -hmm. if you will? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sort of bouncing around a little, which always happens here. So what can people expect for health services? So you go into an assisted living, for example, at Hoffman Summerwood, you have your ULSA program, so they can get medication help transportation to physicians. Do you have an, a, a clinic on site or a doctor that's associated and how does that work? If you don't the mind? assisted living agency provides coordinate, nursing coordination of services. So the nurse oversees it and the nurse's title is a salsa, which everybody thinks is very funny. <laughs> Are you the salsa? I'm the salsa. You're the salsa, you dance. By you regulation, <laughs> it's the supervisor of assisted living services and that comes up as a salsa. So in each assisted living agency at each site, you have to have a salsa who okay. is the nurse that oversees and makes sure that the regulations are being met. Okay. And that care, that you have staffing to meet the care needs and that um, you have the staff that have the skills to meet the care needs. Mm -hmm. And that includes, as you were saying, um, medication assistance, personal care assistance. Usually the transportation and the activities is provided by the facility. It's, that's not an assisted living agency skill. Okay. It's, it's really very focused on health related Do services. Do all assisted livings provide transportation? Is that a common to be, service? Uh, to be registered as a managed residential community in the state of Connecticut, you do have to provide some core services such as access to transportation, okay. such as meals. You have to make three meals optional or available. Um, laundry assistance, certain mm -hmm. things like that, a, a emergency alert system. Mm -hmm. Those are required in order to be registered as an MRC. Okay. And 24-hour security, which is really important mm -hmm. um, as to what, what the building has for a security service. And that doesn't necessarily mean a security guard. It means that the building is manned 24-7, um, has, has a system set up that protects the people who live there as far as coming like and going. Just you your home. Right. Visitors, yeah. And so is there 24-7 nursing care on site or on call? Or how most, does that work? Most facilities do not have 24-hour nursing. Some do, um, especially if they're connected with another facility where there is skilled nursing. Mm -hmm. um, but most have a nurse on call. Okay. 24-7. Part of the with, with an aid With an aid assistance 24-7. Oh, okay. And that aide contacts the nurse on call and gets direction from that nurse on call. Okay. So 
there really is a fine line. Um, someone, why would someone need a nursing home instead of assisted living? Because I hear you help with showering, you help with medication, you provide food. Mm -hmm. What's the difference then with the old-fashioned nursing care, skilled care that I'm thinking about? You want to take that one? <laughs> well, I thought the clinical okay. team would. Um, the, the, the number one question is safety. Okay. Um, it, it's become a very um, murky line as to what is skilled nursing and what is mm. assisted living and where does the person, you know, where is it going to be safe? So we look at safety. In order to be in assisted living, a person needs to be safe alone in their apartment. Okay, so they, that's the quality. We provide a lot of queuing and coming and going and checking in on people mm -hmm. th that need that. And then other folks are very independent, mm -hmm. still driving and doing their whatever activities they choose to do. Um, but people need to be safe. Okay. And so that's where our evaluation, and, and we do evaluate people before they move in and also throughout their stay if they're, if they're on assisted living services. So you can't just drive up for example, to Hoffman Summerwood and say, hi, I'm ready and no, have my bag. No, no, it's you a come process. out and you assess whether they have uh, determined the right match for themselves, correct. essentially, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. correct. But I think it's really important that people understand that there's a lot of folks living in our building that do not need assisted mm -hmm. living services. And, and in, our, in our environment, not everyone is on our service unless they choose to be or need to be. Um, mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are, ve are living very independently within the facility because again the facility is not the assisted living. Right, I know for example someone specifically at Hoffman Summerwood who simply just doesn't want to do any more cooking and that wasn't right. a health issue but boy done with cooking I'm so excited right. I don't even want the stove in my apartment that you graciously have. Exactly. Uh, so I, I would imagine there are a lot of different reasons that yep. make someone pick up the phone. How many calls do you get from the children of parents who say, I don't think mom and dad are safe, but mom and dad think they're fine. Yeah, that's very common. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you handle very that? Do you, what do you do? Do you tell the children they have to get mom and dad ready themselves? It's not for them to choose? or It's always good when they can come and see for themselves that it's not what they necessarily thought it would be. A lot of older people think in terms of skilled nursing facilities that mm -hmm. they may have had a parent that resided in a place that was, you know, a higher level of care and they may not even be aware that these communities are like beautiful hotels or, I you know. I want to stay whenever I come to you, I'm not going to lie, I want to just get a room. Yeah. <laughs> and the amenities, you know, it, it, it sometimes is, you know, a real eye opener when people can come and visit and mm -hmm. Um, I know other communities think like we do in that we want people to come and visit. Right. We want folks to come again and have an opportunity to meet people that live there, mm. talk with people that live there, even family members if that's helpful, to get a better understanding and um, they might be very pleasantly surprised. You do trials as well, I hear. Mm -hmm. We absolutely do, yeah. Is there a minimum month of stay? Could someone just stay for a week, stay for a month, try it out? Would it, well, how do you do the trials? And do other assisted livings offer trials as well? I know that many assisted living communities and independent living communities do offer a trial stay. For Hoffman Summerwood, we do a two-month minimum. Mm -hmm. um, but we're happy to do that, and it usually uh, it turns out that the individuals choose to stay mm -hmm. because they enjoyed it so much. I, I, yeah, I can't imagine why you wouldn't. It looks, I have a separate question. I've been to a few assisted livings and everyone has a different terminology for the, for the occupants. Some call them residents, some call them members. What do you call them at Hoffman Summerwood? What's the choice and why do you choose what you do, if you don't mind me asking? I'm curious. Well, it started a long time ago, and Janice, I'm sure, remembers back in 2001. Mm. When did Hoffman Summerwood open? 2001. 2001. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we've always called our residents members because it's kind of a family mm -hmm. atmosphere that we try to cultivate, and mm -hmm. it feels that way, so mm -hmm. it's just our terminology. And I, I know there's some others out there that use that word yeah. as well. Well, it feels like a choice, I think, too. And, they very, and they very much have um, a say in what goes on in the community on a regular basis, as a member would. You know, that's, that's true. That's really that we want to foster that relationship. What kind of things do the members get a say on? Or about what do you ask? There's a member council mm -hmm. um, oh, that okay. meets on a regular basis, and and they vote for who the leaders are of that group, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's um, 
um, a very well attended and um, can be very hot topics <laughs> in those <laughs> meetings. But uh, it's very, it's very, it, it's really does give them a strong say as to what happens in the building. That's terrific. So if they have issues or if they see something in the market share that mm -hmm. they think you need to start thinking about, that's where some of mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. suggestions will come from. What are the apartments like in assisted living? What are your options? Are pets allowed? Um, that depends yeah, what, on the community. Yeah. I mean, a lot of communities are pet friendly, but, mm -hmm. you know, probably catering to smaller pets. Um, <laughs> no horses. <laughs> right. And the individual needs to be able to care for that right. animal, you know, to to the best that they can. Um, but the apartments, you know, some communities have studios only, some have all one bedrooms, many of them have one and two bedroom apartments, mm. but they all have a separate bathroom of their own, um, you know, living space, bedroom area. Some have kitchenettes. At our community, we have full kitchens in all of our apartments. Wow. So if someone wants to celebrate their birthday, um, doing that in their own apartment, in the dining room, do you have separate dining rooms for special family occasions? How does that work? We do. We have a private dining oh, room and we also have some community rooms for mm. larger events such as 90th birthday parties or anniversary parties. Um, and most communities do. Mm -hmm. So it really feels like your home as much as you need it to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, most communities allow for uh, entertaining, mm -hmm. you know, even on a daily basis, you know, if a family member wants to join for a meal, mm -hmm. it's usually a welcome thing. Oh, that's thing. nice. So mm -hmm. can, what about guests? Can you have someone stay overnight in an assisted living? Like if your daughter's in from somewhere and you just, how does that work? Well, at our community, yeah. of course, the answer is yes. And we also have a guest suite that's available. Oh, that's nice. Um, I would think that Can most communities, guest yeah, suite? <laughs> it's quite lovely. So I would think that most communities do. Um, but I mean, important. maybe if it was a dementia care or mm -hmm. there was something a little more mm -hmm. specific about it, that might not be the case. That, but it's important because you want to try and give them as much independence and normalcy and feeling like, because I could imagine it would be very difficult to, to move out of your family home, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the place where you raised your children, you mm -hmm. have your memories. And um, what can you do to help people bring those memories with them? Like, do you have um, shadow boxes? You have things that they could say, look, this is who I am still. And this is another stage of life. How do new members share that with their new community? I think they just have to bring the things from their home that are most special to them. Mm -hmm. Things that they have to have with them, they should bring with them. Um, and our members are always opening their doors to their neighbors and their friends. But it is a, it's a very difficult and can be a very traumatic mm -hmm. move to leave the home that you've raised your family in. It can be, but I think that our um, our members, as we call them, find comfort in consoling one another mm -hmm. when going through mm -hmm. that process. There's mm -hmm. a lot of camaraderie and a lot of support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, no matter how beautiful and wonderful, it's still a stage of life okay. and that that can be difficult. And it's a new beginning. Exactly. It, and it sometimes takes a while, but mm -hmm. folks find that it is a new beginning with a lot of new options and. Sometimes people start doing things that they never would have dreamed. They were never a person to exercise or pick I'm, up a paintbrush oh, and all wow. of a sudden at age 90, whatever, they're trying something brand new mm -hmm. or writing Our poems. Writing class. So tell me yeah. some of the activities someone could expect at an assisted living. You know, what do you have where you are? You said poetry readings. You, you have a pool or you poetry, have access writing. to your members have access? Our members have access to the JCC. They all get a membership to the Mandel Jewish Community oh, Center. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, to use the pool or any of the facilities there and we provide transportation wow. as well. But there's a lot, you know, that's fitness great. classes on site and a lot of communities oh. offer that because, mm -hmm. you know, seniors want to stay active and keep moving what they're able to keep moving. Mm -hmm. um, things, you know, cultural things, musical programs, um, you do field trips as well? I Absolutely. Pretty good. Yeah. You have to have a vehicle. We have four vehicles oh, at our community. Oh, that's great. Um, any day of the week, it's somewhere else. Shopping, <laughs> theater, outings, day trips. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Yeah. So they just, yeah. oh my God, yeah. I do want to move in. It sounds so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and that member council has a lot to do with that as far as what 
kind of oh. activities people want and mm -hmm. um, what things are working and what we need more of and so. I I'm always so amazed how much people older than myself no, like for computers, and they're mm -hmm. they're more computer literate than mm -hmm. I am. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm amazed at Facebook pages and Skyping, and I mm -hmm. I assume all your members sort of have those options as well. Yep. Which is they can either have it in their own apartment, mm -hmm. or they or we have them that they can use in a, in a common space and mm -hmm. and have some lessons. And that's oh, that, yeah, I can use the <laughs> lessons. <laughs> um, so residents are free to come and go as they please, mm -hmm. literally, mm -hmm. round the clock. Um, talk about um, the assisted living services agency specifically. Okay. Um, I, I would imagine that most children, or and as well as the, the, the members themselves, that's probably the top concern, their health, when they're moving in. Mm -hmm. um, and whether they need services or not, what what would you what do you get and when do you know that you need services? I mean, you know, so you evaluate them and you say they're here and this is what you recommend. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. if they say no, I don't want those services, but you recommend them because you feel as a mm -hmm. nurse that they're important and they need them. So let's start there. It really goes back to that safety issue again. You know, mm -hmm. when we do our evaluation, part of the before people move in and actually um, sign a lease, we do a, a nursing evaluation to make sure that we know what's going on for mm -hmm. for healthcare needs. Um, it's hard when you're just meeting people for the first time for them to know what we have to offer and to know what their needs are. So it's a, it's a, always a fluid um, mm -hmm. process. Um, but we do need to be sure that people are safe. And so if we recommend the minimum of what we can provide to keep someone safe, then we do need them to follow along with that and accept those services. Um, usually what happens is we'll start slowly and mm -hmm. just you know add services as people need it, as, as people age in place, which is a, a term we have. Um, Family often doesn't know. They know that there's a need for a change. They know that there's a need mm -hmm. um, that, that mom or dad needs a little more, but they're not quite sure what that is, and it takes a little while to figure it out. Um, and our services are, are very fluid in that we can increase and decrease on a daily basis, mm -hmm. needing oh, okay. a, depending upon what their health status is. Um, if someone has had an incident and ends up going to the hospital and then maybe to rehab and then come back, they may need a little more assisted living for that time bracket and then we back off again. So we want people to be to feel independent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because our services, because we're in the building, we can offer 15 minute increment of services. So it's not like having a home health aide come oh. and have to find out what you can do with this person for an hour or two. Our aides come in, do the task, whatever it is, and then leave. Okay, so if someone um, literally just needs a friendly reminder for their medication, correct, that would be a typical. Or they just can't tie service. their shoes anymore, mm -hmm. which you know is is overwhelming. If that's a task, you can't, you're not, you don't have that flexibility. So that can be as simple as that. That we help them get their shoes and socks on every morning. Okay. Okay. Wow. I think one it's of the things range. too that when we were talking about the the um, dining services and and the reason for people moving, loneliness is a big one. Um, and so we see people that don't even re really recognize that themselves that they're lonesome in their own home. Mm. Um, they've gotten really isolated because they're less active. Um, and it's wonderful to watch people make new friends in the dining room, and mm -hmm. that's also the frightening part of moving. People don't think they're going to remember names and faces. It's very frightening you know, to make it, this change. Those changes, you know, from five years old forward, who am I having lunch with? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who do I yeah. know? It's, they yeah. never go it away. It can be very overwhelming, but once they develop those friendships, they're even when they go away for the weekend with family, they're so happy to come back and right. see their friends again. That's terrific. I mean, it sounds like and I, you're doing a, a fabulous job there. I've got to ask a big question now, uh, two big questions. First of all, before we get to the, uh, when do you know you need to move out? How much does this all cost? And it will, and is the also services separate, which sounds like to me critically important. Mm -hmm. um, so how do, how does the cost work? And is there insurance, Medicare, Title 19? How does that all factor in? So for the most part, it is private pay. Okay. There are a couple of pilot programs in the state that are subsidized. But for the most part, it is private pay. And the cost will depend on the community, the specific community and the amenities that they offer. Mm -hmm. It will depend on the size of the apartment. 
and the level of service that you're receiving. There are some communities that offer, it's a um, flat rate with their services are included in that monthly fee and other communities, I think it's more common where you're paying for the level of care that you're receiving in addition. So that number can be mm -hmm. more or less depending upon what your needs are. But I would say, generally speaking, anywhere over $3,000 up to 5,000 and over per month you'd be looking at. Um, okay. So Medicare does not cover assisted living, mm -hmm. but many folks were finding more and more do have a long-term care insurance policy, okay. which is of great help to them for assisted living. And that's a nice benefit to be able to tap into. Oh, okay, so if you have long-term care insurance, that can help offset some of the costs. It can if you have mm -hmm. uh, for assisted living benefit, mm -hmm. absolutely. But again, it includes everything except that range, um, includes everything but the ALSA services, correct? Depending upon the site, it, and right. depending upon which, yeah. is, which is a difficult question right. to yeah. to really evaluate because each facility that you visit and and look at offers that in a different way. So it is it is hard to for the shopper. Right. So you should visit. You should ask right. those questions and mm -hmm. get that Excel spreadsheet right. going. Right. To, to do right. those comparisons. And Hoffman Summerwood community, we we don't want people to pay for something that they're not using. Correct. So it is very separate in that. Folks that are not using our oh, services see. at all don't have any fees in, mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. rent associated with the assisted living, and those that are using our services are paying for it. We're already coming almost down to the end, so I want to make sure um, a few other questions. Uh, when do you determine it is time to move out, or can you literally age in place to the end there, or talk about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I think as long as somebody has a safe plan of care and we are able to meet their needs safely, mm -hmm. um, you know, f folks tend to want to stay in their home, mm -hmm. what has become their home, right, as exactly. long as possible. It comes down to a question of, of finances mm -hmm. and, and safety, and pl as, as Valerie said, the plan of care. Um, we have, uh, people have 24-hour private aids in our facility. And, oh, so they could, if they could they, afford to, they could stay there yep, pretty much with yep. assistance in the apartment. Yep. That's, that's terrific. Um, hospice services, I mean, it's not unusual to have mm -hmm. someone on hospice services in our facility. So we, this is their home. Mm -hmm. and we want them to stay in their home as long as they can. That's terrific. We're, we're getting down to the end. If people have questions, where can they go for more information? I would recommend people contact the Connecticut Assisted Living Association, and you can visit their website at ctassistedliving.com or the National Assisted Living Organization, which is called Argentum, A-R-G-E-N-T-U-M, at argentum.org. I think we have a few more seconds. If you each had to together, three tips for anyone thinking about assisted living that you would give to your own parents before they start this journey. I would say visit and visit again okay. and get a good feel um, and be comfortable with it. If you're not comfortable mm. with it, it may not be the right Just fit like for college. you. There <laughs> are so many choices and so many different options for folks today, which is a great thing. That is a great thing. Any tips from your perspective? And I would say be brave and be, <laughs> and be open-minded, sure. um, which is hard for all of us. It, but, it is certainly hard. But it can be a wonderful opportunity. I want to thank you both for taking the time tonight to talk to us about assisted living and assisted living service agencies and all that people could expect. Um, if you have questions about assisted living, again, visit the... Kayla website, and if you'd like to call Hoffman Summerwood Community, I am sure Valerie would give you a great tour and, and answer any of the questions you may have. Until next month, I thank you for joining us on Join the Discussion. If you would like to send in questions or topic suggestions, please email me at jointhediscussion at hebrewhealthcare.org. Until next month, have a good night, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.